The new league year in 2024 is upon us. What has to happen before everyone is cap compliant? Looking at you, Los Angeles Chargers. Deontay <laughs> Johnson traded. Daniil Hunter, now a member of the Houston Texans. Watch out for that team in Houston. All that and more coming up on today's Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look into the NFL on the field and in the front office. With elite breakdowns, next level analysis, and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We appreciate all of the everydayers out there, and we always appreciate it when you're subscribed on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcast. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first ticket purchase. All right. They keep coming in waves here with the uh, free agency around the NFL. There are trades. There are teams that need to get under the cap by 4 Eastern on Wednesday as the new league year begins. Um, Let's start with the Houston Texans, Matt, because they already did something really important for their organization, their franchise, most likely for the next decade and that was get a new head coach in D'Amico Ryans who looks like a home run hire and draft CJ Stroud in the first round last year who looks like a home run quarterback and when you've got a home run coach and a home run quarterback you're in good shape in the National Football League and on top of that they traded up and got Will Anderson a stud edge rusher out of Alabama in last year's draft they had the offensive and defensive rookies of the year so what do they do they supplement it and get the best pass rusher to go on the opposite side of Will Anderson on that defense and sign Danil Hunter to a monster contract. But uh, this team is scary in the AFC, not even in the division. Should we be talking about now the Houston Texans along with the Kansas City Chiefs and the Buffalo Bills and the Miami Dolphins and the Baltimore Ravens and all the teams at the top of the AFC going into 2024, Matt? I'm going to say knocking on the door, you know, like I would certainly put them ahead of Brown Steelers, that group, you know, I mean, I, I think they're probably a tier two AFC team, but I also think they're probably the team that has the best last couple of weeks or, you know, week one of free agency. It's funny. You mentioned league year starts at, you know, by the time some people are probably listening to this, but we know a lot of things are already in place. They, they kept a couple of guys of their own, you know, Dalton Schultz, you know, guys like that. But then they went out and got some not high priced, but high ceiling guys. Jeff Akuda on a one year deal, three year deal for Aziz Al Shahir, as you know, is a great fit in the Ryan system. You mentioned Hunter, which is one of the biggest whales in all of free agency to put opposite Anderson. And then I go back to Danico Autry, too. I thought that was one of the cheapest deals out there. I couldn't believe that they got him at that price. And then you throw Joe Mixon in the mix, uh, basically for nothing. So I think they're vastly improved, especially on defense. Am I seeing the Danelle Hunter contract is two years, 49 million? That's what I'm looking at too. Okay. I just want to make but sure. Almost that all right. guaranteed though. It's 48 million guaranteed. Oh yeah. That one extra million dollars. <laughs> right. That is not guaranteed. <laughs> how, how do you get that out of the contract? Um, that's interesting. Two years, so it's a shorter term, but uh, on par when we're talking yearly average, twenty-four and a half million dollars per season, which is you know just under what Christian Wilkins got, um, but it's more than what Jonathan Greenard got in Minnesota after leaving uh, the same position there as the pass rusher opposite Will Anderson on that defensive line for the the Houston Texans there. So uh, interesting yet. So big money, but shorter contract for Danelle Hunter. For some reason, I thought that was a a longer term deal. And I was surprised when I saw that number. But I mean, that I love it. I love the fits. Aziz Alshair. uh, He's obviously a really good player. He's a starting caliber player for D'Amico Ryan's defense. I thought he was going to sign there last year. He ended up going to uh, Tennessee on a one year deal. And then uh, now he ends up on D'Amico Ryan's defense and linebacker. So phenomenal. They're, they're a good football team. They already over, you know, exceeded everybody's expectations last year. And 
quarterback development is not linear. We know how that goes, Matt. But, man, how could you not be excited about what the Texans could look like for a very long time? 100%. And I think Greenard's a really good player, but Hunter's a tier above him just on game day. I mean, I understand the age thing's a little different and injury history, et cetera, et cetera. Um, But in terms of just winning on Sundays, I would much rather have Hunter. And what's nice is, and I didn't foresee this when I did my last mock, but they could go so many different directions in the first round or the first couple rounds and truly do best available. Like in the mock I did, I had Brian Thomas Jr. slipping and they just grabbed him, you know, throw him next to Nico and Dell. Like, why not? The Pittsburgh Steelers busy over the course of the last 24 hours since I spoke to you last, Matt, and you are, uh, you are, knowledgeable on every single thing that's going on there with the the Pittsburgh Steelers and I, w- I want to save the the trade conversation to the next segment just because it might go a little bit long but let's talk about Patrick Queen I did not see that happening at all for the Steelers everyone had it penciled into the Seattle Seahawks and following his defensive coordinator from Baltimore but yeah. Patrick Queen leaves the Baltimore Ravens not for Seattle but for Pittsburgh staying in the division a heel turn for those Ravens fans uh, that have loved watching Patrick queen for the last four years since he was drafted to the baltimore ravens he is now a pittsburgh Steeler on a three-year 41 million dollar contract yeah this one blew me away to be very honest with you because i brushed him off in free agency i knew linebacker was a huge need frankly it has been since ryan shazier's awful injury they've been trying and trying going back to bush and all kinds of different guys and hopefully they've got it right this time but why i brushed it off is I thought he was going to get a Tremaine Edmonds $18 million a year type contract. You know, former first-round pick. He's unusually young. He's really starting to hit his stride. My concern is hitting his stride or hitting his peak has directly correlated with the the day they basically traded for Roquan Smith. You know, can he be Batman and not Robin? And that's what we're about to find out. But he's still an upgrade. Roquan Smith wasn't the player he is today right away either. It took him a little bit of time. All these linebackers take for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Because there was, there was a, there was a time in Chicago early in Roquan Smith's career. It's like, dang, we drafted this guy in the top half of the first round linebacker. I don't don't think we see that. And then the last couple of years of his rookie contract, okay, there he is. That's the guy. Uh, And it's, it's unbelievable now with the, with the Patrick queen signing in, in Pittsburgh. uh, I think over the last 10 years, there's been maybe four first round linebackers that have done a second deal after their rookie contract was up with the team that drafted them. I mean, there's so yeah, many names that are get drafted high busts on the list. And then there's other guys that were good, but still signed elsewhere because when you're a first round linebacker and, um, and I think it was, uh, I can't remember who posted it, but they're there. They showed the safeties as well. And it was even worse. There was one Derwin James is the only safety that signed wow. with the team that drafted him after as a first round player. So those middle of the field guys, they get really expensive if they're great. So they end up walking in free agency and all, you know, all too often you're drafting traits there and it's such a cerebral position at safety at linebacker. And a lot of them don't hit either. So it's pretty unbelievable. The, the hit rate and then also the retention rate for those high draft picks at linebacker and safety in the NFL draft, those first rounders. Yeah, I think there's so much evidence that, especially at linebacker, but both, because that you draft all these traitsy first round guys that I hate the term instincts, but you know don't have the instincts, the vision, the the knowledge yet, and the Shanahan's and McVeigh's just manipulate them to no end early. They fall step. Devin White's like the best example out there. You know, I mean, like his splash plays are great, but there's times he goes the wrong way. Maybe he's a year away from hitting his stride, you know, and you get him cheap now as opposed to using the fifth pick in the draft on him. Or maybe he never comes around at all, you know, like, so I think it is better business to buy these guys after their first contract than invest first round picks. in. And it's similar at tight end. And yes, the correlation yes. there is, you know, running back is a higher hit rate than those other positions with the first round guys. But, you know, that that's a different conversation with attrition and, uh, you know, how good the replacement level is for those other players. And, you know, for, for teams to replace a, a first round guy with a seventh round guy at running back, and you don't see the fall off that you might see at other positions. But when, uh, you know, tight ends, especially in safeties, they're they're not high contract positions. They're not high value positions in the NFL. So if you draft a guy in the first round, he better be great. Uh, and if he is great, well, now you got to pay him 
crazy top of the market money. Yeah, yeah. tight end. That's the, some of the t- the talk with Brock Bowers. If he's a top ten pick, he's already one of the most expensive tight ends in the NFL. So you're not even getting the the rookie contract value that you might get at other positions. But you also don't want to force offensive tackles and defensive ends and quarterbacks every time just because they are the higher value positions in the NFL draft. But you know that's what makes the draft fun and what makes it interesting and what makes it really difficult in a lot of cases too. So uh, fascinating there. Well, I, I was. I already knew it was that way with linebackers, but I was I was pretty oh, yeah. surprised when I saw the linebackers and the safeties and just how how rare it is that you draft a guy in the first round and he's still there four or five years later. It's amazing. So I'm definitely taking an optimistic black and gold colored glasses on this, but I do think playing next to Roquan is great and it makes your life easier. But it's not like having Bosa or Garrett on the other side demanding double teams, and you're just sitting. So you're not Alvin Harper, you know, with Michael Irvin. <laughs> it, it, that that position's a little different that way. It's not like oh, I never get blocked because Roquan's next to me. Deontay Johnson, another big move that the Pittsburgh Steelers made, and that was trading away a wide receiver to the wide receiver needy Carolina Panthers. Let's look at that move from both sides. And talk, talk Los Angeles Chargers because there's some very big cap moves that they have to make to be compliant later this afternoon when the new league year begins. Some other teams still over the cap as well heading into 2024. Next. This episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by BetterHelp Online Therapy. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your specific schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire. You get matched to a licensed therapist, and it's that easy. Switch therapists at any time if you want at no additional charge as well. So learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Deontay Johnson headed to the Carolina Panthers and uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers feeling another need in free agency. Uh, this time via trade, though, with Dante Jackson, the cornerback, coming back to the Steelers from Carolina. Some draft picks uh, getting exchanged as well in that. But from the Carolina Panthers' perspective, we had thought, Matt, that maybe they were going to spend one of those second-round picks that they have to go get a, a T. Higgins or you know make calls about Brandon Ayuk or one of these other wide receivers in the NFL. They ended up getting a guy in Deontay Johnson, who is a separator, which is exactly what they need right now. Uh, for their young quarterback, Bryce Young, but they didn't have to give up a second-round pick to do it. Um, what do you think about this trade? Let's start with the Carolina Panthers side and adding a wide receiver to go with rook- or second-year guy Jonathan Mingo and probably another player that they're going to add through the draft still for that wide receiver core in Carolina. Yeah, when but when this came across my phone the first time, I thought, that's all the Steelers got for Johnson. Yeah, I mean, like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> the thing. It was like, like looking at the picks, and it was like, oh, that's a that's a three digit number draft pick right there. That's right. Not a second rounder. That's not 39. That says 147 or something like that. Yeah. And I did more homework on it and thought, well, they must have created a ton of cap space. No. I mean, they create so I love it from the Panthers side of things. From the Steelers side of things, I have a hunch there's another shoe to drop, and then we can react to that too. But really all that gained was this was a player swap. And I think Johnson's much more valuable than Jackson. But I also think that both those needs, I would much rather be in the receiver market than the corner market right now, especially in the free agent world, but also in the draft. So I think that was part of it. But we always talk about building the nest for a young quarterback. And whether they're overpaying or not for the guards or whatever, Carolina at least is putting capable people around their young quarterback that they can evaluate him. And I would think the offense is noticeably better as it stands right now. Johnson's clearly their number one receiver. Could they still make a Higgins trade? Could they draft one at the top of the second round? Absolutely. And I'd be all in favor of that as well. So I think they're doing the right things to finally do their quarterback. Right. But all the Steelers picked up was they moved up like 50 spots at the very end of the draft and like half a million in cap space to swap these two players. And I'd much rather have Johnson. 
I, it was almost like okay, we're we're swapping spare parts here, right? So it was a swap mm-hmm. of day three picks. Was it a was it a fifth and a sixth that were that went back? Uh, it was one for one, and yeah. they moved up from a late seventh into an early six or so. I moved up like fifty spots at the end of a. Yeah, the draft. And Dante Jackson's a good player. You know, he, he he's all right. Yeah. Game cornerback in the NFL, but he was a guy that the the Carolina Panthers might have cut. So yeah, I know. they got nearly a free Deontay Johnson. So my question to you is, what's the scout report on Deontay Johnson? Why were the Steelers so willing to give him up? I know he's a guy who can separate with the best of them, best of them in the NFL. He's had some problems with drop drops throughout his career. And while he's got great feet and is a good separator, I know there's been some criticism of him with maybe not being super efficient in his routes, a little too much seven on seven, like taking too many steps to get in and out and 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 lose a guy and maybe not being exactly where he needs timing wise in routes occasionally. But what's the scouting report on Deontay Johnson? Who are the Carolina Panthers Panthers getting? I'm going to do more homework, but I never got the impression it was like to the Antonio Brown level that you have to get him out of the building, you know, like take whatever right. you can for him. He's an extremely hard worker. He's a great route runner. And... I understand Arthur Smith wants blockers. He's not going to block at all. You know I mean? That, that part's, you know, and he's a free agent after the year. Obviously they weren't going to resign him. So they're getting something while they can. I didn't think it was enough, but I, he's a very efficient route runner, especially against man coverage, extremely hard worker. People have soured on him a little. He's kind of been in Steeler fan base doghouse for a while. Cause there has been spells where there's a lot of drops, but that's also because he got peppered with targets, you know, line of scrimmage by Ben, and, you know, like the end of his career. He often catches the ball and comes back towards the line of scrimmage. In, but that's also because Matt Canada's route tree doesn't allow them to run after the catch. And there's been a couple times where there's a fumble on the ground. Well, there's one. There's a fumble on the ground, and he just kind of looked at it. You know, like there's some effort things there that weren't – don't fly around here so well. What do the Pittsburgh Steelers do at wide receiver now? Uh, I, I I can absolutely picture Russell Wilson throwing rainbows to George Pickens sure. down the field, big plays. I you know they're going to run the football in Pittsburgh, play action stuff, but uh, that's a starting caliber wide receiver, and um, they already needed to probably add a wide receiver. So oh, yeah, now they need two. About pick twenty in round one now for the Pittsburgh Steelers is is wide receiver in play there for the for the Pittsburgh Steelers in round one? I think Brian Thomas is an option there. I definitely think they'll draft one in the top three rounds. But I mentioned the other shoe to drop. Like, just knowing Omar Khan, their GM, he's a, a very he's, he's a cap background guy. I just have a hunch, and nobody's told me this, that it'll come out whenever it's official that the Panthers picked up five million of Jackson's contract or something. You know, like half a million dollars in contracts in cap savings just doesn't smell right to me where 5 million wood, 8 million wood. And then maybe you make an op, make a run at a Ridley or I don't think Odell, but Marquise Brown, everyone's talking about Tyler Boyd. He's from Pittsburgh, but I know we're going to talk chargers. How about Mike Williams when he gets cut in an hour or so? It's interesting because do you just go all in and, and you get two X wide receivers and, and chuck the ball deep, you know, Mike Williams, you talked about yeah. uh, Brian Thomas in the draft. Or do you need somebody who's more that underneath route running type of a presence? Is that the player they're going to be looking for in the NFL draft? So interesting. Yeah. But I uh, keep hearing like Boyd and Renfro, and that's fine. But and, and then I, that's fine if you get Brian Thomas. It's not fine you, if that's yeah. You still need uh, Allen Robinson's gone as well, right? So yeah, he's gone. Right. I mean, you, you need a back, slot guy. You need a number three, and you need a number two. Two. Yeah, and that's right. George Pickens being a true number one, and I don't know if we can even put that on him yet either. So interesting. And I think Jackson helps your corner situation. He's going to make the team, but he's a borderline number two, really a number three with no sl- slot capabilities. So the hole that they quote filled, I don't think they filled nearly as one big as the hole they opened, which is now a crater. Right. Yeah. So wide receiver vaulting to the top of team needs for those Pittsburgh Steelers. And we'll see in our latest mock drafts, uh, what changes there. We're going to take a peek later in the week. Uh, and and we'll have some mock drafts coming next week. Actually, uh, and my my I haven't done a mock draft yet. My first mock draft post free mm. agency is on its way as well. Uh, so uh, a lot I of true, I think when you're especially looking at team needs, uh, I, all the way through the first round after yep. free agency. I have to do another mock before Tuesday, so I'm waiting till like Sunday night, Monday night. So that's on the horizon for me all too. Right. So we might get a Williamson and a Peacock mock coming 
uh, next week or in the in the very near future here on Peacock like and Williamson. Let's talk new league year. Let's talk about moves that might be coming, especially those later today from the Los Angeles Chargers who need to clear about $25 million in cap space, and there's plenty of candidates to help them do that on that roster. They still haven't been able to trade any guys or cuts next in Los Angeles. This episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you're trying to buy tickets to your next big event. It shouldn't be a hassle. It should be an exciting time. You're getting ready to go to see a football game, see a baseball game, see a basketball game. Uh, your favorite bands in town. You're going to go to a concert with your friends, a comedy show, a theater event, any of those events near you. You can find tickets fast and easy at Game Time with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat and their best price guarantee. Game time takes all that guesswork out of buying tickets. You get a view from your seat. You know what to expect when you arrive at your event. And my favorite aspect of game time, the all-in price, is show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. Buy tickets in seconds, couple taps on the app. The tickets are always going to be right there on, their game, on your game time app, so you don't have to go fishing through your email when it is time to arrive at your event. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first ticket purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On. That is L O C K E D O N. One word. Locked On for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Los Angeles Chargers. I expected to wake up today and hear. Nick or Joey Bosa was cut. Khalil Mack was cut or traded. Mike Williams, uh, maybe a restructure for somebody uh, like they haven't done anything yet. So clearly they they're hoping that teams are going to want to trade for these guys. No trades are happening. Uh, the the NFL is vultures, Matt. You talked about it with Mike. Oh, yeah. The the Pittsburgh Steelers aren't trying to give you a draft pick. They're just sitting there waiting for those scraps to fall off the table. Right. It's like we'll talk to Mike Williams agent when he gets cut. We're not going to talk to you about sending you a draft pick for him. Cause we know you got to cut him because we see the accounting and we know you got to get it under the cap by four Eastern Wednesday. Yeah. And they're still way, way under and much more so than any other team. They added Gus Edwards and Will Disley, which tells you how they want to play football, you know, four yards in a cloud of dust. I mean, I, I just recorded a locked on dynasty and said, you know, which of these free agent running backs got the biggest boost in fantasy stock? I went with Gus Edwards. I mean, you know, Saquon Edwards or Saquon Barkley was the easy one, but I mean, talking about a guy that had very little value. Now he's going to get the ball a lot in a ground and pound offense, but you're right. I mean, they have to make several massive moves that maybe by the time people are listening to this have already happened. Could they trade Keenan Allen? Those other guys don't seem tradable at their extreme prices. Could they restructure a few? I, I don't think you're going to go in with the cover being Allen and Williams bear. It seems like Williams is the guy that's going to be odd man out of the two receivers, but I'm speculating and kind of waiting here at the end of our seats to see what they do. Cause they have to make moves. They have no choice. They have four of the top 12 cap hits in 2024 in the entire NFL. Wow. Yeah. It's wild. That's so wild. Yeah. Here's one. So number six in the NFL this year, and, you know, obviously there's restructures and it's you right, know, right, right. Very, very convoluted how the accounting gets to where it's at. But one of the most expensive players in the NFL is superstar quarterback Patrick Mahomes. He signed a, a half a billion dollar contract, right? And they've already restructured it like three times. Um, and I, I think it's, I think they, re, I think it's just, they pull that lever every single year with pa that, that yeah, contract. Go to the sense. bank of a home. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyways, his cap, his cap, it's still sizable, even though they've lowered it based on, you know, what his yearly salary is and stuff. Uh, it was about $36 million in 2024 is the cap hit for Patrick Mahomes. The number five and number seven on either side of Patrick Mahomes is Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa, both defensive ends. Wow. So, and everybody else above them is all quarterbacks as well. It's Josh Allen and Joe Burrow, and it's, um, uh, I, I think Kyler Murray is up there. So it's ridiculous. So you got two defensive linemen making a quarterback cap hit and top of the league quarterback cap hit. And then you go down the list, and then you got Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, who are both also in the top 10, 12 cap hits in the entire NFL in 2024. And uh, I've seen some memes today, and it's been funny. Tom Telesco, you know, kind of tiptoeing out of town, 
<laughs> like, oh, well, oh, yeah, I'm with this guy. So I'm Band gonna go and then be GM for a new team now. So we'll see what happens there. Um, he's with the uh, the Raiders now, right? Uh, as their yeah. GM. So, anyway, uh, some work to do, and clearly the Chargers want to trade some of those and, and hope people will take guarantees off their books and and take some of these players and it'd probably be for nothing you know seventh round picks conditional late picks and it's crazy to think that you could get someone like joey bosa for that but uh, i fully expect maybe all those guys i, I think probably keenan allen's maybe a, an extension slash restructure player but three of those four are probably gone in the next couple hours i would think so so just to kind of lay this out, and I think you said this earlier, it's really difficult to find up to the second cap information, but we're close. I mean, there's these five teams are all a million over, a million under, can probably restructure something, maybe let somebody go, but we have to do more in order to make some more moves. And that's the Cowboys, the Browns, the Dolphins, who I don't understand why they can spend as much as they are the Ravens, and the Bills. They're all hovering right around the limit and won't have any problem making weight, you know, today. The Chargers are 25 under. You know, I mean, they're not two under. They're not, a you know, half a million over like some of these teams. They're 25 under. So big things are going to happen with them. And along those lines, just to kind of throw people in the you know, where we're at here, the Titans, Commanders, Patriots, Bears, they all have over $55 million to spend. Could one of those teams trade for Keenan Allen and restructure or something along those lines and take one of these big-name guys off their hands? I think they get cut. I don't know. I don't see it. Yeah. Uh, Bosa especially is the tough one because yeah. they would probably like to keep him, but he's got a roster bonus coming up that's going to guarantee more money, and he's only played he's played less than a full season over, over two years. He's, he's played 14 mm -hmm. games in two years. And so I think he's a release candidate. And I don't know what he's going to get in the free agent market, but I think he'll be cut. Um, I think Khalil Mack has more value because of how he played last year, but he's older than Bosa. Right. Uh, can they find some way it's to so eat some of that salary and make all that work? Um, they just don't have a lot of wiggle room. And, and the fact that no trades have been consummated yet, I think they're going to get forced into probably cutting three of those four guys and maybe restructuring either Mack or or Keenan Allen are, in my opinion, are the most likely. But we'll see what happens. And, uh, you know, a lot of folks, like you said, might be listening to this, and, then, and it has already happened. But it's just, you know, the the, the bottom line here is that there's going to be some big names hit free agency, and the Chargers are going to be a completely new-look team. The way they play, the way they Absolutely. call plays on both sides of the ball, the roster, this is a completely new-look organization right now in the Harbaugh era for the Los Angeles Chargers. And it's going to be immediate. Like they're, they're pulling off the bandaid. hundred percent. I mean, it's, I think a team like the Titans is in that mold too, where they are just going to totally look at things differently, but you're right. The Chargers are going to get a total facelift. You mentioned roster bonuses and I am not a cap expert. I only know this because digging into the Deontay Johnson trade, he was due a big uh, bonus on Friday. I think there's a lot of those coming up shortly after the new league year. So yeah, and, and maybe some way, other trades. Yeah, but it was reported Bosa said no to any of the pay cuts, restructures, and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that, he's that, not going to get the boat. He's not going to get the that's boat. That's here. Uh, Eric Armstead, by the way, is is about to be officially released, and the same thing happened there. Yeah. Like when you see that report of a uh, player did not opt to take a pay cut, restructure with his team, that's the team saying, "Well, we, we'll if, let's do something here. Well, we might have to release you." That's the player saying, "Not not going to work with you." And then the thing that follows that is the player gets released. So yep. I think that's why we're going to see that with those guys. So we might see a couple of those around the league here in the coming days. Yep. And I think the agents and teams kind of already know that's happening with those players. Yes. And we're just waiting for the official report and for the official, you know, facts to be sent to the league that, you know, uh, Bosa, Mac, Armstead, and there's numerous others around the league that are getting released. I wonder if they still fax or that's like sending smoke signals. Yeah, I wonder. There's got to be a, something official. I think it's probably docking yeah. sign. I think is what's happening. Uh, I bought a couple of houses recently, and okay. there, there have been some faxes, and there has been way too much paperwork that that still blows me away. Uh, I can't believe that a mailman shows up to my door and, and gives me all this paper that I <laughs> instantly put in the mailbox and put it in the recycling. It's right like right in front of his doing? face. Yeah. yeah, what are we doing? Uh, in in fact, I think that would be funny just to 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 make a recycling box that looks like a mailbox, right? And just have it out in front of your house. And it's the recycling, <laughs> that the, you right, pick right. up, it's the giant mailbox. Um, 
in fact, maybe some legislation. Can we stop killing trees for, you know, for spam, uh, uh. Snail mail that comes like, what are we doing? I can't remember the last time I opened mail and it was something that was actually important that I needed. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think they send letters into the office. Maybe an email is good enough, but I mean, uh, so that could get lost in the mail, I guess, too, in some way, shape, or form. But I mean, the fact that there's faxes is insane. I, I, I know we, we're gonna. Re- we need to find that out. We need. I, yeah, it's the quickest What's way the to process? get hard, you know. But yeah, yes. Back I, in my I, recruiting days, this was when Larry Fitzgerald was 17 years old. You'd hover around the fax machine waiting for Larry's signed document to come in from his high school yeah you, you get the phone call and you pick up the phone and it's the fax sound you're like oh shoot that was supposed to be a fax oh well, you gotta send it again so then you gotta right. call him back and say hey you gotta resend the fax i picked up the phone ruined the signal so now yeah. you gotta resend the fax sorry larry we didn't we screwed that up you know right <laughs> i can't imagine <laughs> there's probably fax machine at the league office but i i imagine there's a lot of docu signs and a lot of digital documents i hope it's happening. dusty by now yeah yeah but there's old gms like I, oh yeah, I met Bill Bill Belichick. If someone was using a fax, Bill Belichick was probably one of them last year, right? Right, fax that into the office. We got to yeah. sign the guy or release the guy. You know. Uh, all right, we got to get out of here. Uh, fax is incoming for <laughs> sure, and we will have the rest of it covered. By the way, it's mailbag time. We're moving it to Thursday again this week. Oh so yeah, yeah. Here's your free agency questions. A lot has changed in the NFL draft. We will cover um, what has changed in the NFL, how that outlook uh, looks at the top of the NFL draft. We have Matt mock drafts to come as well on Peacock and Williamson. And as we do, we've got, uh, we've got that breakdown for you every single day on the locked on podcast network, Matt and I back tomorrow questions in on Twitter at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL, or drop a question in the YouTube comments and we'll cover it tomorrow right here. Peacock and Williamson.